Hello, English learners, and welcome to English Pod. My name is Marco. I'm Amira. Amira and I are here today with an interesting lesson about a hotel situation. Amira, why don't you give us a little bit more information? Well, the situation is taking place in a hotel, and someone is checking in and is obtaining an upgrade. An upgrade. Okay, that's an interesting word. Why don't we listen to the dialogue and then we'll come back and explain all this vocabulary. Good afternoon. What can I do for you? I'd like to check in, please. I have a reservation under the name Anthony Roberts. All right. Uh, Roberts. Oh, Mr. Roberts, we've been expecting you. And here is your key card to the presidential suite. But there must be some mistake. My reservation was for a standard room. Are you sure? Let me double check. Yeah, here, this is my confirmation number. You're right, Mr. Roberts. There seems to be a mix up. Unfortunately, we're overbooked at the moment. So. Uh, not to worry. We're pleased to offer you a, a complimentary upgrade. Woohoo! Presidential suite, baby! Okay, everyone. That is nice, huh? Yeah, the guy is really excited that he's going to get the presidential suite. Yes, there's some interesting phrases and vocabulary items here. And I know, Marco, you want to talk about some of them. Right. Um, the first one, and this is really useful for all of our listeners who travel a lot. This phrase will come in handy. And it is, I have a reservation under the name. Under the name. Under the name. Under the name. So before we explain this phrase, let's listen to some examples on how it is used in other situations, and then we'll come back and give you more information. My secretary made a reservation under my name. I'm sorry, sir. I don't have a reservation under that name. Do you have a reservation under the name Smith? All right, some really good examples there on how we could use this phrase in other situations. But just in case, let me explain it real fast. Under the name means that when you go to the restaurant or a hotel and you tell them your name, they know that you are the person that they have been expecting, they have been waiting. Yes. Well, I have chosen another useful phrase for you and it is mix up. Mix up. Mix up. Mix up. There seems to be a mix up. Before we talk about this phrase, let's listen to some examples of how it is used. There was a mix-up at the airport and my bags were sent to Antarctica. I'm sorry, sir. There's been a terrible mix-up. We've given you the wrong baby. <laughs> okay, that was useful and funny. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, the baby situation. Oh my God, imagine that happening. Yeah, I know. Well, guys, so a mix-up is a confusion or a misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. Exactly, well put. All right, Marco, what do you have for us? Okay, the next word that we should take a look at is... Overbooked. 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 What does that mean? So if a hotel or a flight is overbooked, it means that they are full. They are more than full. Right. So they cannot accept any more people. Exactly. Okay. Now, uh, why is this phrase useful? Because it happens all the time. There are so many other situations where you can use this word or hear it from other native English speakers. Um, for example, a bus or a train can be overbooked. Exactly. That's really common. 
Okay, let's take a look at the last phrase for today, and that is complimentary upgrade. Complimentary upgrade. Complimentary upgrade. Complimentary upgrade. So this means that, for example, when、uh, the hotel is overbooked and all of their standard rooms are full, they will give you a better room, a more expensive room, but free. Yes, because it was not your fault. Right. This also happens sometimes if you're lucky on airplane flights. Yes. So if you are in economy class and an airplane, but for some reason it's overbooked, they will move you to business class or first class for free. I have a similar story, but I'm not going to tell you about it now. For now, let's go and listen to the dialogue one more time, and when we come back, we'll talk some more. Good afternoon. What can I do for you? I'd like to check in, please. I have a reservation under the name Anthony Roberts. All right,、uh, Roberts. Oh, Mr. Roberts, we've been expecting you, and here is your key card to the presidential suite. But there must be some mistake. My reservation was for a standard room. Are you sure? Let me double check. Yeah, here. This is my confirmation number. You're right, Mr. Roberts. There seems to be a mix-up. Unfortunately, we're overbooked at the moment. So.、Uh, not to worry. We're pleased to offer you a, a complimentary upgrade. Woohoo! Presidential suite, baby. I love listening to this dialogue. It just—it's、uh, just so nice to see that someone is enjoying his upgrade so much, huh? Yeah, especially since he was expecting just a really normal room, and now he's gonna be treated like a king. So, Marco, have you ever gotten a complimentary upgrade? Yes, yes, I did. When I was traveling through India, I bought a normal seat in the train, but for some reason. The, it was overbooked, so I talked to the、um, station manager, and I got a complimentary upgrade to first class. I had a similar experience as well. I was flying from Shanghai to Qatar, and、uh, I actually had an economy seat, but for some reason they just upgraded me, and I was so happy. Oh, really? Like、yes. it wasn't overbooked?、Uh, well, I'm not sure because normally the night flight is not. That full, but they upgraded me for some reason, and、oh. I was so happy. It was an upgrade to first class. <laughs> wow, that's really cool. I,、yes. I would prefer a first class upgrade on an airplane. Yeah, any day. Well, you know what really amazed me was like the the food you get there. You know, you have a five course meal. Oh, really? Yes. And you get all the drinks you、y、can get, right? Exactly. Wow, that yeah, I would be really happy there. All right, everyone, we're out of time today, but be sure. To listen tomorrow because we'll be back again with another great podcast. And also, don't forget to go to our website at EnglishPod.com and leave us all your questions and comments in our community forum. Yes, and we would also appreciate your suggestions. And、um, I hope you enjoyed the lesson today. And Marco and I will be back tomorrow with another great lesson for you. But for now, it's bye. bye. The English Pod audio review. Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. Check in. Under the name. Reservation. Confirmation. Mix up. Complimentary upgrade. Overbooked. Check out. Booking. Concierge. Deluxe room. Receipt.
Let's try that faster. Booking. Mix up. Under the name. Reservation. Deluxe room. Overbooked. Check out. Receipt. Complimentary upgrade. Concierge. Check in. Confirmation. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Under the name. Under the name. Under the name. Confirmation. 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 Mix up. Mix up. Mix up. Overbooked. 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 Hello, everyone, and welcome to English Pod. My name is Marco. I'm Amira. Hey, Amira, how are you today? I'm doing great. What about you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm excited about this、uh, lesson that you have for us today. Yes, it's actually a very, very useful lesson. It's about someone asking his boss for an assistant. Oh, okay, an assistant. What's、yes. an assistant? Well, it's someone who helps you with your work around the office. Okay. Great. So let's listen to this、uh, dialogue, and when we come back, we'll take a look at all the interesting and useful vocabulary that you'll find. Like I told you before, we just don't have the resources to hire you an assistant. I understand that, but the fact is, we're understaffed. The timing is just not right. The economy's bad and it's too risky to take on new staff. Yeah, I guess you're right. Here's an idea. What if we hire an intern? She would take some of the weight off my shoulders. She? Yeah, you know, a recent graduate. She could give me a hand with some of these projects and we could keep our costs down. That sounds reasonable. Let me see what I can do. Tony, I'd like to introduce you to your new assistant. Okay, great. Let's meet her. Hi, I'm Adam. Oh, hi,、uh, I'm Tony. And we're back. Tony, <laughs> he's surprised, huh? Yeah, he's.、Uh, I don't know why, though, he's surprised. I think we should talk about that a little bit later. Yes, for now, let's look at some interesting vocabulary and phrases here. Marco, I know you've chosen one for us. Yeah, the first one that I want to take a look at is resources. 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 And that means in this text, basically money. Right. So the office doesn't have enough money. Okay. I've chosen another interesting word for you, and that's understaffed. 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 Now, understaffed means. That they don't have enough people working there. They don't have enough workers. Right, they don't have enough employees. Perfect, okay.、Um, the next one is timing is just not right. The timing is just not right. The timing is just not right. The timing is just not right. Okay, let's listen to how we can use this entire phrase in a different situation so then we can understand what it means. Let's listen. I was going to sell my house, but the timing is just not right. Honey, I think we should have a baby. The timing is just not right.
Okay, great. I guess that makes it uh, clear. Yes, actually, it's very obvious that it means that it's just not a good time. Right. Perfect. Yeah. I have another interesting phrase for you, which is weight off my shoulders. Weight off my shoulders. Weight off my shoulders. Weight off my shoulders. So to take weight off my shoulders is another way of saying to help me with my work or to take some of my work away from me. If you have a lot of things to do and I come and help you, that means that I took some of the weight off your shoulders. Yes. Let's look at the next、uh, phrase that we have here and it's give me a hand. Give me a hand. Give me a hand. Give me a hand. Okay, now this is not literal. It's not that I'm going to give you somebody's hand, right? Let's listen to some examples and then we can come back and explain what it means. Can you give me a hand with these boxes? Neil, I'll need you to give me a hand with the sales reports. Here, let me give you a hand with your suitcase. All right, give me a hand is another way of saying help or to help out. Exactly, to help out. Right. Perfect. Now, the last phrase we're going to look at here in this dialogue is keep our costs down. Keep our costs down. Keep our costs down. Keep our costs down. So, to keep our costs down means to try and not spend so much money. Exactly. Many companies, for example, now、uh, control how much printing you do. Yes. Right? To yes. keep the cost down of paper. Yes. So, in other words, they do not want to have unnecessary spending. Perfect. Okay. I think it's time for us to listen to this dialogue one more time. But I want everyone to listen and see why Tony is surprised at the end when he meets his intern, when he meets his assistant. Like I told you before, we just don't have the resources to hire you an assistant. I understand that, but the fact is, we're understaffed. The timing is just not right. The economy's bad and it's too risky to take on new staff. Yeah, I guess you're right. Here's an idea. What if we hire an intern? She would take some of the weight off my shoulders. She? Yeah, you know, a recent graduate. She could give me a hand with some of these projects and we could keep our costs down. That sounds reasonable. Let me see what I can do. Tony, I'd like to introduce you to your new assistant. Okay, great. Let's meet her. Hi, I'm Adam. Oh, hi,、uh, I'm Tony. Well, you know, Marco, I think that Tony was really surprised because he was kind of hoping to have a female intern. Yeah, I think that's exactly what he was expecting. Maybe this guy is a little bit sexist. He thought that an intern should be a girl, but instead, he instead was surprised. Instead, he got Adam. <laughs> exactly, and it looks like Adam is really big and really tall because he's got that deep voice. Right. An intern, Marco, do you want to elaborate on that? Working at a company、uh, with a very low salary or sometimes no salary at all, but what you're gaining is experience and you're、um, learning a lot of things. Everyone who has、um, been an intern or had an intern knows that sometimes、um, they are not treated all that well. Sometimes they just serve coffee or, or they have to do paperwork. Or, so, like, photocopying things. Exactly. And, yeah. But some internships are really, really cool, and some are really good experiences for、uh, learning. Yes, definitely.、Um, actually, I, I know a friend of mine, she used to work as an intern in one of those really big companies, and she told me that she has gained so much experience doing that. 
Yeah, I mean, even if you don't get paid, the experience that you get is really good. And、um, that just opens doors for maybe getting another job. Or sometimes the interns get hired by the company to stay because they do such a good job. Yeah, I think that's、uh, mostly the case, huh? Yeah, that happened to me once. I started working as an intern, and、uh, after three months, I was hired by the company. So it does happen. Believe so you、me. did a good job. <laughs> Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, we're out of time today. I hope that you enjoyed our lesson, and、uh, we'll be back tomorrow with another really cool and really interesting lesson from EnglishPod. Don't forget to come to our website at EnglishPod.com where you'll find some really great and interesting resources to help you learn and improve your English even more. Yes, you should definitely do that. And Marco and I would love to receive your comments and suggestions that you can leave on our community forum. But for now, it's time for us to say bye. bye. The English Pod Audio Review. Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. Money. Resources. Not enough people to do the job. Understaffed. It's not a good time now. The timing is just not right. Remove pressure or stress. Weight off my shoulders. Help. Give me a hand. It's okay. That sounds reasonable. Hire. Recruit. Working too much. Overworked. Not enough people to do the job. Short staffed. Reduce spending. Cut costs. Having too many employees. Overstaffed. Let's try that faster. Working too much. Overworked. Remove pressure or stress. Weight off my shoulders. Having too many employees. Overstaffed. Reduce spending. Cut costs. Hire. Recruit. Money. Resources. It's okay. That sounds reasonable. Not enough people to do the job. Understaffed. Not enough people to do the job. Short staffed. Help. Give me a hand. It's not a good time now. The timing is just not right. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Resources. We would like to use more resources to increase our sales. Resources. We don't have enough resources to start a new project. Resources. Intel has a lot of resources for research and development. Understaffed. Hospitals in poor regions of Africa are understaffed. Understaffed. I did overtime last week because the company is understaffed. Understaffed. The factory is producing less than usual because it's understaffed. The timing is just not right. 
the timing is just not right. The timing is just not right for us to have a baby. The timing is just not right. I want to buy a car, but the timing is just not right. Weight off my shoulders. Could you help me plan the party? That would really take some of the weight off my shoulders. Weight off my shoulders. Finishing that project was a big weight off my shoulders. Weight off my shoulders. Winning the lottery took a great weight off my shoulders. Give me a hand. Can you give me a hand with these boxes? Give me a hand. Neil, I'll need you to give me a hand with the sales report. Give me a hand. Here, let me give you a hand with your suitcase. Paying thirty dollars for new shoes sounds reasonable. Does that sound reasonable to you? Your salary request doesn't sound reasonable. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition here at English Pod. My name is Marco, and my name is Catherine. And today we've got a great upper intermediate level lesson for you all about. Animal and human rights. Right. So it's a very debatable topic. People want to protect animals, mistreatment of animals, and this is what we're going to talk about today: protecting animals and giving them rights. Do you think animals have rights? Eh. Well, you know, I think we <laughs> could leave that for the end. I don't want to, you know, influence the argument here in today's dialogue. But、uh, yeah, as you've said, I think it's very much a topic that people can go both ways on.、Mm-hmm. So why don't we listen to our dialogue as two people discuss animal rights and let's get their opinions on things. You should have seen the TV show that was on last night. The topic it covered was really interesting: animal rights. Do you really believe in that? If they're going to focus on something, they should do it on civil rights. Yes, but we can't deny that animals are vulnerable, defenseless, and are completely at the mercy of human beings. I understand your point, but we continue to have transgressions against human rights. If so much attention weren't devoted to the topic of animals, we would then concentrate more on saving a human being instead of protecting a koala. You can't compare apples and oranges. I believe that both topics are important, and that we can't ignore them. The mistreatment of animals can cause a great environmental imbalance. I believe that governments should prohibit activities like poaching. Well, you are right on that point. This is the reason that I don't buy leather, and I try to buy synthetic products. At least you're doing your part. My contribution is to have a pet in the house that I treat like a member of the family. As long as you don't treat it better than your wife, it's fine. All right, we're back, and both of them had have good points, right? In favor、yeah. and in、mm-hmm. against, and as you said, they also talk about human rights, which is also a very important topic.、Mm-hmm. But before we discuss this topic, why don't we take a look at the language that was used now in language takeaway? Language takeaway. All right, so in language takeaway, our first word today is vulnerable. Okay, vulnerable is a great word. It's a way to describe something, and so、uh, something is vulnerable if it can't really protect itself.、Mm-hmm. So you are in danger of being hurt. Exactly. Right.、Mm-hmm. So you're a, you're vulnerable. Now,、uh, this isn't only used for animals, right? It can be like an army is vulnerable if they don't have strong defenses on the. The border, or right? Or my emotions. I'm feeling vulnerable because I just had really horrible week, and I'm really depressed, and I'm emotionally vulnerable. Okay, very good. So vulnerable, and they also talked about transgressions against human rights. All right, so a transgression is a thing; it's a noun, and、uh, transgression is like doing something harmful to or. 
um, against someone. Against someone or something. So a transgression, it's a noun. So it, is it doing something in a bad way? Or? Exactly. It's a bad thing. It's always negative. You can't. Exactly. It's not positive, right? Right. And so in many prayers, for example, in the Christian faith, you say, you know, Lord, forgive me for my transgressions, for mm -hmm. having uh, kind of crossed the line from doing good things to bad things. So you're doing bad things. Very then. good. So that's a good uh, way of putting it, to cross the line, to kind of go beyond where you should. All right, so transgressions. And now another very serious problem in the world is poaching. And that's one of the things that they said they should control, poaching. All right, you might have heard this word in a different context because it does have another meaning, but I'm just going to explain the one meaning here that we're talking about, which is uh, killing animals, especially mm -hmm. for sport or for selling their skins and their furs. Right, so that's poaching. Mm -hmm. um, what's the difference between poaching and hunting? Uh, hunting can be legal. Poaching is illegal. Okay, so that's the main difference. Mm -hmm. Hunting is usually for sport. You hunt either for food or for sport, right? Legal hunting. But poaching is usually you, you want to sell, like you said, the fur or the skins or something. Or the tusks on uh, rhinos or something like exactly. that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, so poaching. And then they talked about synthetic products. So what is, what is a synthetic product? Well, synthetic product is something that is man-made. So it's not natural in that it doesn't come from the earth. Uh, cotton is a natural product. And plastic, for example, is synthetic. Or um, here's or another example. Nylon. Nylon is a really good synthetic product. And so people who don't want to use animal products like wool or leather, they prefer to use synthetic products products. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe you've heard of this in clothing, it's called synthetic fibers, right? Like mm -hmm. nylon or polyester. Exactly. These are all the words that we have for language takeaway today. So why don't we move on now to a couple of very interesting phrases that we saw in the dialogue now in Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. Okay, this first phrase is, uh, well, it's a common one, but uh, it's definitely not used in very happy circumstances. We say <laughs> that something or someone is at the mercy of someone else. Okay, so animals are at the mercy of human beings. What does this mean exactly, mercy? So basically it means that the animals, in this case, are don't have control of what's going on. So human beings are the ones that control everything. So if I decide to, to, to kill them, then they are at my mercy, at my will, at my whim. Exactly. And so you could say, I'm at your mercy, Marco. Please just like help me out with this. Mm -hmm. It's like you're the one in control. You're the one who can help the situation. Mm -hmm. Will you help? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm at the mercy of someone. And then uh, they were talking and debating this thing. And, and an interesting comparison came up. You can't compare apples and oranges. All right, you're going to hear this all the time in English. It's it's not just a, a funny little phrase that the person uses. It's a very common idiom. Mm -hmm. And so we say, it's like apples and oranges, mm -hmm. or you can't compare apples and oranges. Mm -hmm. And this is essentially saying these are two different things. Completely different. Completely different. So uh, I can't compare him and her because it's apples and oranges. They're two different things, two different people. Right. Because that's what in the movie you said they were like peas and carrots. They just so they, go together They well. go together. Is, does that make sense? Not really. Forrest <laughs> Gump was a little bit strange like that. But I, I think the meaning is that if I say that's a big apple and I say that's a small apple, they're all apples so I can compare, compare them. But mm -hmm. I say this is a really big orange and that's a really big apple. Well, they're, they're, they're different. different. Yeah. You just you just can't compare them. <laughs> All right, and um, and towards the end, the person said that uh, you're doing your part. Mm -hmm. You're doing your part. Yeah. So uh, this is this is a hard one to understand sometimes because it's not like a part in a play. It's more mm -hmm. like a part in society. You're helping make society or culture or civilization better. So you're contributing. Exactly. So for example, what? So what would be a, an example of a person doing their part towards society? Well, for example, I don't own a car, I ride my bike, and mm -hmm. it's my way of doing my part to help the environment. Okay, very good. Because I can't, obviously, I can't uh, buy a factory that's, you know, very green, or I can't do all these things to change the world, so I'm going to do small things that's my, that those are my way of doing my part. Okay, so like another example would be recycling, that's doing your part. Exactly. Or in this case, the person but only synthetic uh, products, mm -hmm. nothing made from nature. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. So very interesting phrases. Um, why don't we listen to our dialogue for the last time and then we'll be right back. You should have seen the TV show that was on last night. 
The topic it covered was really interesting. Animal rights. Do you really believe in that? If they're going to focus on something, they should do it on civil rights. Yes, but we can't deny that animals are vulnerable, defenseless, and are completely at the mercy of human beings. I understand your point, but we continue to have transgressions against human rights. If so much attention weren't devoted to the topic of animals, we would then concentrate more on saving a human being instead of protecting a koala. You can't compare apples and oranges. I believe that both topics are important and that we can't ignore them. The mistreatment of animals can cause a great environmental imbalance. I believe that governments should prohibit activities like poaching. Well, you are right on that point. This is the reason that I don't buy leather and I try to buy synthetic products. At least you're doing your part. My contribution is to have a pet in the house that I treat like a member of the family. As long as you don't treat it better than your wife, it's fine. All right, so a debatable topic, animals and animal rights. Um, what do you think? Well, I'll say this. I would be a hypocrite if I said that it's bad to hurt animals because I'm meat, a meat eater. <laughs> I like to eat meat and I like to wear leather. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do think it's bad to mistreat animals. So I really, I try to buy... Um, you know, free range chicken or um, meat from places I know that treat the animals well. And I definitely disagree with poaching and with using animals, uh, especially endangered animals, mm -hmm. um, for money and cash purposes. And so that's my position. But uh, what's yours? I mean, I know you eat, eat meat too. No, yeah, of course. And uh, I think even though protection of animals is a very important topic and you don't want um, the mistreatment of, of these little creatures that are, are very vulnerable to, to us because we're, we're smarter than them in the end. Mm -hmm. um, but I think also it has to do a lot with uh, superstition sometimes and kind of mystical and magical things. For example, people killing rhinos because they believe that the rhino horn has a, s amazing curing properties or, you know, or the same thing with elephant tusks and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it also it, it involves this certain aspect that... People almost don't know any better. They just, they truly believe that these things actually work or that but they will help them. So they don't consider the, the like in the dialogue said, the, the imbalance that they create in, in the environment or the, the consequences. Or there might be some very serious evolutionary consequences that we cannot even imagine. And mm -hmm. so, you know, things, things change kind of over time, sometimes quickly and sometimes slowly. But if we force change really quickly, mm -hmm. uh, who knows what the results are going to be? It might be really negative for us. Exactly. And that's what we want to know now. What do you think um, about these topics? Because in the end, the environment, animals, it, it, they're all connected. If you wipe out all the foxes in, in, in a forest, then you're going to have like a, 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 you're going to have too many snakes running around. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, what do you think? Come to EnglishPod.com and you can where you can leave all your questions, comments or suggestions. And we're always there to help out. So we hope to see you there. And until next time, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.